Well, hello. If you're seeing this video, it's because I've sent my laptop off for repair. Uh, what I am doing is I'm, I just want to give you an overview of my collection of pens, and uh, since my laptop is off for repair, I can't easily film a pens in use video this week because uh, I can't do the video editing. So uh, this here is my daily carry case. Now I put some extra pens in it just for fun. But uh, this is what I carry with me every day. It's a uh, Lihit Labs, which I may be mispronouncing. This says Design for Arrangement. Uh, inside, no, they're not all in because I was planning to just show you some pens there. I didn't really lock them away nicely. Uh, so these are some pens that I have. Uh, this is my Platinum 3776. It's a King Yo finish. It actually goes with some of my other Platinum pens which I will talk about them in a bit, so I'm going to set him right here so he's out of the way. Uh, some of the other pens in here you'll find. This is a uh, ballpoint pen, a handmade ballpoint pen, not handmade by me, uh, one of my students who was in 8th grade at the time and selling them at the county fair, so I bought one. Um, Parker 51 from O.V. Bjornsson, Parker 45 and a Parker 21 uh, from Sandra. Uh, this is a Pilot 823, which I need to ink up. It's not inked up right now. Uh, it's here because I plan to ink it up. Uh, over here, what you're looking at is... Uh, there, that helped. What you're looking at here is a Faber-Castell Ondoro, which I just filmed a review of this one, actually. On the other side, Noodler's Conrad. It has a re Nemocene re-entry nib on it. There you go. So the Nemocene re-entry nib is kind of a fire thing. Uh, I'm noticing that at least on this pen it seems to be disappearing a bit. Oh no it isn't. Sorry, it's the light. Horrible lighting. Let's try turning it around. Uh, when I review these Nemocene nibs I may have to think about lighting a little better. Yeah, you can see it. Alright. So, Noodler's Conrad. I forget the name of the finish. I don't really care. Put him back. Also in here, Pelican Twist. Uh, up until I was having problems with my camera tonight, my plan was to review this Pelican Twist. Uh, Lamy, uh, Lamy 2000 Broad, which is currently inked with, I can't remember, some kind of black ink, because I'm trying out several black inks. This is a uh, Esterbrook LJ and uh, it, this was donated by viewer John Blackburn, who I thank you for that, and I'll be reviewing it soon. Uh, I always like to ink them up a few times before I review them, so haven't gotten there yet, but I promise I will. Uh, Jin Hao, something or other, I just reviewed it, and you'd think I'd remember its number, but yeah, I don't, and it's not inked up at the moment. My uh, This is my restoration project, it's a Watterson's. Uh, Look for the video of that. Well, who knows when you're watching this, but uh, I have a video ready of my restoration trials and tribulations with that pen. Let me set it aside. And then a Bauer 388, which is a upcoming review, currently empty. In fact, several of these pens are empty because I just put them here for lack of somewhere to put them. Uh, nice thing about this case, if you're into it, is there is spots to put more stuff. Um... At times I've put stuff here. Right now I have a non-functional UV light. And, uh, oh, switch, yeah. See, nothing happens. <laughs> uh, so, need to do, well, I'll probably put new batteries in it or something, but whatever. So, yeah, that's my daily carry case. It usually goes in my bag to work. Now, I have, my collection has grown. This used to be the case I wanted them all in. I want to say it's a Monteverde case, but I can't find any branding on it, so uh, I can't remember. I've owned it for several years now. But let me uh, just pick up the document camera. Yeah, now you can see my horrible table that I write on. Uh, for these reviews, anyway. I actually, well, what I really write on might be even worse. Uh, did I say it out loud? Yeah, so that's my collection of pens, except for the ones that are in use. Like, here are my Noodler's pens. Uh, there's one that's missing, because it's in the case. Uh, so let me just take you through these, instead of holding the 
this up real high. Let's just go through them. So, <clears throat> if you're into this kind of thing, this is an interesting. If you're not, this is a deadly boring video. Uh, Noodler's Conrad in the Forbidden City finish, which I love that finish. Noodler's Conrad Ebonite. Uh, this is the Rebellion Red finish. This is where that one belongs. This is a the more standard model at Noodler's Conrad. I can't remember the name of the finish. I don't really care. But it's uh, I use this for kind of my strange inks like uh, Chin Shi Huang and some of those others. A black one, which I have put uh, the Goulet nib in. This is a Noodler's the Ponset. In fact, it's a prototype. I won it in a contest. Uh, Nathan Tardiff sent it to me as I don't know, I probably got last place, but I placed. Uh, my very first pen review was with this pen. This is another Noodler's Dupont set I picked up more recently. I really, really wanted to experiment with uh, these Nemesine nibs. So I put, uh, yeah, it's just not working. Anyway, I put one in it, had to heat set it and all that. Uh, might need to do, I actually should probably do a video on how to heat set a nib, so that may come down the road. A little dry. This is a Noodler's Ahab. I use it with, uh, can't remember what its name is, but it's another exotic ink. Uh, Retro 51. Love this finish. This is my uh, Wall Eversharp Skyliner 50. Uh, and it's not as white as it looks here. There we go. I, I mean, you have to do something with the lighting here. And then over here, my infamous zombie review with the Shrade Tactical Fountain Pen. Well, <laughs> there it is. Mm, let's, let's just try dialing down the exposure a bit more. See if this helps. Ooh, too dark, possibly. Um, let's see. So along with this, pi this Platinum... I have several Platinum 3776s, a Shoji, uh, Yamanaka, Chartre Blue, Bor Bor Borgonia finish. Uh, this is a Waterman's Hemisphere, which is my Bay State Blue pen. Aurora Gemstone pen, I like it, and this is my kind of my gateway drug to Aurora. Too bad the darn things are so expensive, or else I might actually own a few Aurora pens. Um, we'll just have to live without. Conklin... Word gauge, fun, fun, fun pen. Um, AG Spalding and Brothers pen, which I actually do enjoy, but I never seem to ink it up. Uh, Nemesine, can't remember the model, but upcoming review right here. Uh, Pelican M200, which is sort of stained. Uh, and then my Schmidt Intrinsic, which uh, another fun pen, I just don't seem to ink it up very often. On the other side here, I have, this is where the Pilot 823 should be, and it's not, because it's going to be inked up soon. Uh, Custom Pilot Custom 743 with the Falcon nib, very fun nib. Pilot uh, Justice 95, another fun pen. Pilot Custom 92 with a broad nib, nice pen. Especially you put Noodler's Matahari's Cordial in here, very attractive. Um... My Pilot Vanishing Point, which I have reviewed, seems like I've reviewed that recently. Uh, Pilot Fermo, which is a new pen to me, I, th I believe. If I remember right, I got this one in January. Uh, actually, this was, this Pilot Fermo was the straw that broke the camel's back and why I put myself on a hiatus. I mean, not that financially I needed to, but I do budget and uh, ran up against the edge of my pen budget. I said, okay, yeah. Um, don't like doing that because I like to have cushion left over in my budget and I don't so this time so I just thought ah, well, let's not buy any more pens till April and I've gotten actually besides buying some pens I've gotten some in trade and I've gotten some as gifts so I'm just kind of overwhelmed with pens and you know I want to enjoy pens and if I have too many and I feel like I'm doing them out of duty they're not fun anymore uh, Caveco Dia, this is a modern one. In a little bit, you're going to see a vintage one. Uh, Montegrappa Fortuna, the only Montegrappa I own. Um, don't actually find too many of their pens that attractive, but I loved this one. Even though I don't consider this pen good value at all, I like how it looks. This is uh, 
my Cavecos. I I have some more. Uh, I don't know why I put my Montegrappa right in between the Cavecos, but I did. Okay, the. I wouldn't call me obsessive at all, but that's annoying. All right, problem solved. Uh, here, these are my Caveco Sports. I have an All Sport. I have a Skyline, and uh, just a regular one. Parker Vector, which is the exact same model that got me into fountain pens years ago when I was about ten years old. Oh, let's see some Lamies. I've got Lamy Safari, Lamy All Star. The broad Lamy Two Thousand should be here, but it's not. Because uh, it's in use. This is my fine one, which is normally my daily writer, but I'm giving it a break because that Aurora 88. Twisby. Hmm, 580 Aluminum. Marte Modena Citizen from uh, Larry Barones. Uh, Monteverde Regatta Sport. This is a fun pen. This is a Lank CV uh, Crocodile. And... God, that's gorgeous, and I can't wait to review it. In fact, I might have to review that this week, because I feel like I need to. I just love this pen, and it's so gorgeous. I mean, I, I don't, this camera doesn't do it justice, but I'm hoping with my new macro lens I can do it justice. Uh, this is a Hero 616. I, not that I'm particularly fond of it, but I'm saving it for a Rodeo. And then my Jinhao 950. Again, not a particularly wonderful pen, but I'm say I uh, I love the finish on it. That's the main reason I'm keeping it. And there should be a second sailor here with a Fude nib. I don't know where I put it, so hmm. But that's what goes here. And I actually need to figure out how to open up a spot here. Probably when I do the rodeo, I'll get rid of this guy and shift everyone over, because when my pen buying hiatus is over, right there where the Twisby's sleeping. There's going to be a Lamy dialogue. That's my plan. But anyway, so a lot of pens here. I'm kind of grossed out by how many pens I've got here. Uh, now, 48 pens in here. I don't quite have it full, but I'm close. So I'm probably going to look at trading some or giving some away uh, or selling some. And uh, I've got some ideas for what they'll be. But that's not what the topic of this video is. In this other case, this is where I put, I'll hold it up here. This, I bought this case from Uber Pens, um, myuberpens.com. This is, a. Uh, they recommend it because in this one you've got these elastic straps. Oops, there we go. They can supposedly stress, especially an elderly pen. I don't know if there's any truth to that. Um, but I wanted a second pen case for my vintage pens and they weren't all fitting in there. So I bought this guy. Uh, they also rave about the fact that, sorry, look and make sure you can see it. This side folds out. Now you saw the other one folds out also. So it just folds down instead of to the side. So not seeing what the big deal is, but whatever. So we'll look at my vintage. Oh, there's a pen that belongs in there. I have it sitting out actually because it's drying. Uh, I didn't finish drying it out, but we'll put it in just for this video. So, a little more sparse. This is my vintage collection plus two expensive pens. Uh, let's, let's just wander through it. Um, I didn't know it was a thing until it happened to me. But I had a viewer loan me a pen just like this Omas Ogiva. Uh, I reviewed it f and sent it back to her. And uh, then I found out the company was going out of business. And I thought, well, I'll never get one. But then I found one at a decent price. And it's uh, not my favorite finish. But oh, wow, is the nib wonderful. This is my uh, uh, Visconti Homo Sapiens. My biggest fault I've found with this guy is this My Pen system. Well, the finial fell out and I can't get anything to fit there. Uh, I've tried, the magnetism is gone, and I don't know what's up, you know, I've looked inside the cap, I can't see anything. Uh, I did buy a tiger's eye finial that I may just try super gluing in, I don't really know what else to do, other than send it to Visconti, which is over in Italy, and I'm not really in the mood for that. And that was a used pen, so it's not like it's under a warranty, which is why I could afford it, because if that wouldn't have been a used pen, it'd be outside what I will pay for a pen.
by quite a lot. This is a nice pen. This is a Dutch prototype pen. I believe it's a Pontiac. This was sent to me by Ove Bjornsson of Norway. This is a, I love this herringbone finish, button filler. Has a Larry, it has a Knox nib in it. Um, these two are East German pens from the 1970s. This, I believe, is from the 50s, but I, my research isn't complete yet, so I don't know. These are East German pens from the 1970s. They're a knockoff of some kind of a Mont Blanc, but these are Marcant pens. They came in a pen and pencil set, which was nice. I don't like writing with the fountain pen, honestly. Uh, I mean, it's okay. The nib is kind of nice, but it's just got such a sharp step right here that I don't care for it. But they are unique, so I'm keeping them. And they do write. Uh, this here, I did discover what it was, but I have mislaid it. This is a vintage creation, probably from the 1920s or possibly 1930s. It's a combination fountain pen and pencil. And I have a review of this one. Uh, this was from Chris Rap 52. This was a gift. This is also a gift from Chris Rap 52. This is a Waterman's Ideal 52. Uh, you can tell it's seen some action. It dates probably from the teens or the twenties. Down here, here's my baby. This is the one that I had recently inked up, and I was had it out drying, but I put it in here just for. This is my glorious Centro pen. Uh, 1960s Czechoslovakian pen. Um, I Honestly, this is the nicest pen in my collection. I love the nib. I love the way it looks. It's just absolutely gorgeous. So, I'm going to set it... Yeah, still a little fog in there. So, I'm going to set it back to drying. This is its pencil companion. I do now have lead for it. Um, it the vintage lead is a 1.18 millimeter lead. Modern lead is a lot thinner than that. Uh, this is a 1930s fountain pen. This is a Caveco Dia uh, 803-07. I pointed out that I have the more modern version. Uh, Caveco V14S, a fine 1960s pen. Here's a 1970s pen that would have appeared in schools in Germany, a reform. Uh, this here is an Esterbrook J. This uh, was from Chris Rapp, 52. This is uh, probably from the 50s, maybe the 60s. A nice pen, and what's kind of cool about it is you can change nibs. Let me see what nibs in it. I, was, I, bought, I found a couple flex nibs for sale. I think this is one of them. Yeah, uh, what was neat about Esterbrook is they had several, not that many models, but they had all kinds of nibs that you could screw in. I mean, it's empty, so that's why I'm safe doing that. They just screw in. Very nice. Uh, I wish there was a modern equivalent to that, because that's fun. Because it was a wide variety of nibs. Uh, this here is a very fragile, apparently, Esterbrook pastel pen. Uh, yellow... It's a mini pen. What happens apparently is that when you post it, which I'll just do loosely, the plastic cracks on this part here. Uh, this one is not cracked. This is a pen I found somewhere. Um, I enjoyed this pen. I love how it looks. It's just very 1950s or early 60s looking to me. I can't even explain it. It's just something about the aesthetic. Yeah, beautiful. But knowing how fragile it is, I'm careful with it. Uh, plan a review of that down the road. I have not reviewed it yet. See over on this side, I do not know its age. This is a Parker Dual Fold Vintage Mechanical Pencil. Can't even find mechanical pencils from Dual Fold anymore. Um, this is a Parker Vacuumatic. I should know its age, but I don't. I, I'll have to look. There's a code on the barrel. And when I do its review, this is a nice pen. It's a vacuum filler. Uh, not, like, super flexible, but nice pen. Uh, supposedly, I'll figure out how to film that for you, but the barrel is vaguely translucent, so you can see your ink level. Uh, it's layers of celluloid. These were made from the 30s, 40s. I can't remember if they were made into the 50s, but probably. Uh, this here is my Mystery Senator pen. 
Senator still exists. I'm trying to figure out the model on this and not having luck. That's the only reason I haven't filmed a review on it. Very nice. One of my slim black pens I like. This is a Pond 52, which I got in a trade with Ove Bjornsson. Nice Norwegian pen from the 1950s. It apparently isn't that special of a pen, but to me, as an American, that's pretty darn special. A monogram pen made for Rexall Drug, probably in the 1920s. I think I had this in my pens in use just recently. It's, you know, I just cleaned it. There's a little discoloration on the nib, but I'm good with that. Um, very attractive, and it has a special, uh, right here, the lever has a special catch mechanism to hold it in so you don't accidentally, I guess, do this and squirt ink while you're writing. See? It didn't come out there when I caught it. I kind of did that on purpose. And now, how do I not do it on purpose? There we go. Alrighty. This here, this is, uh, oh, you can't see it. Sorry. This here is interesting. I uh, made the remark that on one of my videos that I've never used a Schaefer. This is a Schaefer snorkel. Um, I'll give information on it when I get around to the review. But what's kind of fun about the Schaefer snorkel, you fill it with a snorkel. So this goes into the ink. You don't even have to clean it off. And then you pull. Let's see if you can hear this. Probably you can hear it better if it's in the ink. Come to think of it. But there's a small... What, what happens when you pull that out and uh, push it back in as you uh, let... Is pressure on a bladder that fills. Very nice writer. I, I was impressed with that. I'm not... Like, super excited to get more Schaefer's, but uh, maybe a really vintage one. And we're coming towards the end here. Uh, these two are Aurora 88's. This is actually the very first edition that came out. Uh, so probably from the late 1940's to early 1950's. The Aurora 88 was made in response to the Parker 51. Um, I'm going to do a rodeo down the road where I compare the Aurora 88 to the Parker 51. The Pencil Companion. Yeah, there we go. So, it they were sold as a set. I have the original uh, case that they came in. Um, this is a different color. Can you see that? This is a different color because it's hard rubber. This is some sort of celluloid. Um... Yeah, anyway, this is the original version, and then they got a little more interesting over time. I actually ordered one of these once from myuberpens.com. Uh, it got smooshed in the mail. It would have been a nicer finish than this, because myuberpens.com does a good job of restoring pens. But, um, yeah, smooshed in the mail. Not their fault. I mean, it's the Postal Service in Europe. The, they some, dropped something heavy on it, and a vintage pen like this doesn't handle that well. So uh, I'm glad I was able to find one because Uber Pens has not had one up for sale again. And they were very good about it. In fact, this pen over here was its replacement. Uh, this is another pen here I got uh, trading with Ove Bjornsson. This is a, I don't know much about it, but it's maybe Todd Swan with a cursive italic nib, which is a lot of fun. I'm glad I got to use it, and I can't wait to review this one. Ah, ah a whole bunch of pens here I want to review. In fact, this whole row here has not been reviewed. Uh, this is a Mont Blanc 32. This is what I got instead of the Aurora 88 when the Aurora 88 was smushed. It just has a nice semi-hooded nib. Turns out it's kind of a bugger to clean. Talk about that when I review it. But very attractive. Uh, this is a Columbus... 65 which is an italian make very flexible nib very attractive pen um, in fact i see similarities with the aurora 88 you know obviously not as good a pen as the aurora 88 you just handling them you can feel it um, but yeah aurora 88 actually has a red ink window which is interesting but they're both very flexible, very nice writers. And then the last pen in this crew here. An Indian, and the, by the way, I kind of forgot about dates. 
Don't know, because I need to research it. 1960s. 1960s. This is a Camlin from the 1970s. That's an Indian manufacturer. And it's another one of my... It's not black, but it's another one of those slim pens that I kind of like the aesthetic. So, uh... Cameron... Sorry, Camlin so Sovereign. So, if you watched the whole way through that video... You're probably a fountain pen person. That's what I have. Uh, I have a couple disposables floating around. There's a Pilot Petite somewhere. Uh, there's a couple Jet Pens Chibis floating around. But yeah, this is my pens. I uh, never expected to have this many pens. One of these days, maybe I'll have to gross you out and talk about ink. Um, just a lot of pens. And, uh, you know, people say, well, how does that happen? Well, I'm 41 years old. I bought my first fountain pen when I was 10 years old. They, they just kind of accumulate like cats. If, okay, <laughs> that was weird. I don't know where the cats came from. I don't own a cat. So, yeah, I don't accumulate cats. Now, squirrels, I think I could accumulate them because they're cute. But anyway, I like uh, these fountain pens, and I've enjoyed reviewing them. And you saw some previews of things to come. You may have also noticed some pens that are not there that I have reviewed. Why? Because they didn't do it for me. I traded them or sold them. Uh, so I thank you for watching. Hopefully next week I can do a pens in use again. And uh, have a functioning monitor. Thank you for watching. We'll see you later. Bye bye.